You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the KCSN Defensive Film Breakdown brought to you by Derek Johnson's Defend the Dream Foundation. Please go down below, click the link below, donate a little bit to DJ's Foundation. We really appreciate it, as I appreciate two of my very favorite Chiefs of all time joining me for this once again, Derek Johnson, Mike DeVito. DJ, buddy, how you doing this week? I'm doing really well. Doing really well. I'm, my golf game's getting better, so uh, <laughs> things are, things are looking up. And weather's changing. I tell people all the time. They 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 say uh, uh, um, since I've been in Kansas City for 13 years, they're like, man, used to the cold weather because the weather's changing, and I yeah. I'm, I never got used to it mm. ever <laughs> ever. Yeah. Hate it. Man. How about you, Mike? How you doing, bud? Good, good, Craig. It's it's always cold up here in Northern Maine, so I, I, I'm the opposite. The second it gets over 50, I'm like, I can't take it. It's too hot. I'm sweating. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. But no, everything's good, man. Everything's good. Loving watching these Chiefs. This has been a fun yeah. year again. Absolutely. We had a... Had an interesting game uh, on Sunday. Chiefs handled business against a Rams team that, frankly, was just ridiculously banged up. And, right. You know, not not a ton that we took from that one. Big game coming up here. We'll get to that towards the end of the podcast. But this week, we're going to highlight somebody who maybe is not getting a lot of the praise that some of the other guys are. Obviously, there's some all-pro level defensive play happening on the defensive line with Chris Jones. Some guys, George Karloftis, that we've highlighted. Frank Clark's having a really good season as well but somebody who maybe we haven't focused as much on big Mike Dana and mm. Mike Dana has been asked a lot to kick inside. You know, we, we talk about Steve Spagnuolo's defensive ends, how they play on the outside. They're big dudes, big, long dudes. But part of the benefit of that is that you can move them inside, play a little bit of three tech. And so that's really what we're going to highlight today is some of Mike Dana's ability on the inside, his intelligence, his rush moves, how he's playing the run. So we're just going to go ahead and kick this off and start talking through it here, highlighting Mike Dana on this run play coming out of nickel. This is just an excellent job of him reading the play, being able to diagnose the block that's coming at him. Mike, DJ, guys, what do you see on a play like that? Can I see it again, Craig? Yes, absolutely. What the hell happened here? <laughs> Sorry, one, one more time, one more time. I, I got I got a, I got a, I chime in first uh, um, right here. What Mike is is doing a great job at is joicing back into the blocker that really mm -hmm. uh, uh, tells you he knows his job and he knows who's blocking him. And when you can do that, you, know, you, you can have your opportunity to, to, to do your job and some. And and honestly, that's a lot of space. I'm, I'm telling you, that's a lot of space. For defensive tackle to, to to make that tackle, but he he, he has good um, leverage. You know, it's, his feet are up under him. He's got good good leverage. He's under his man. And I tell you what, he he's doing a great job at just just staying alive, staying alive. And he's he's not the typical big three technique that you that you usually have in there. But those guys that. I, I like that at times. That's a good change of we had guys like Bailey and some guys mm. like that that mm -hmm. that can move around and be athletic in the inside, which which they can make plays like this with a lot of space. I think this is I think this is hard for deep big bigger defense alignment to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to see is is this supposed to be like a draw? Or, I think it, I think it's a little bit of counter footwork here from the running back. You see that jab step and then come back towards the play. Obviously, Justin Reed coming off the edge reads this really well. But right. yeah, I'm wondering um, if he was designed to go inside. Yeah, I mean this is great by him, just not uh, not overreacting or, or doing mm -hmm. anything crazy. It's really a weird block. Like I'm not sure. First off, I'm not sure what the defense is doing. I I'm, I wonder if he's supposed to be going inside. Like, I wonder Mike, if he's supposed to be jamming right Mike, there. Mike, have you ever seen this? Let me chime in real quick. Have you ever seen a take two draw? It's almost like a take two draw where where they actually turn the lineman turn and make you go where they mm -hmm. want you. 
You know what I mean? Have you ever yeah, had yeah, that yeah. before? That's usually on third. That's yeah. usually on third. What does that mean, DJ? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no that, that is, you know, it's a different kind of blocking scheme. And, yeah. And it's kind of weird. It is kind of weird. But they want Mike Dana. They want him to to just to run, you know, run up run up Perfect. in the gap or whatever, and he just, you know, he'll block them on the side mm -hmm. of him. But he did a, he did a great job by drawing him back into him, not taking right. the soft shoulder. But yeah, this is a weird kind of a blocking scheme. Yeah, you can well, kind of see the center do it too. Yeah, just yeah, that, this, that jab. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Rem I don't remember that. But what I what I do know is. When you get this weird crap up front where it's kind of light and things aren't reacting, you know, especially for a guy who, you know, whose primary job isn't to play a three technique, his reaction to the block, like DJ is saying, is fantastic. Yeah. Because a lot of times, especially with these pass rush guys, it's it's <laughs> easy to take the bait and run up field. Yep. Uh, and, but this is exactly what you want to do. Sit it down, fight the hard shoulder. Uh, I'm just... Yeah, it's just a really weird thing. I mean, but he does a great job. I'm just trying to figure out what the defense is doing and what the sort of what the designed outcome was. That can I? Can you go back one more time? I, we don't have to harp on this, but absolutely no, I love it. What is Reed, this ten personnel? Reed comes in. I mean, he really makes this play. He really makes this play. Uh, um, uh, just kind of, kind of makes them make a decision. Say, hey, you can't run to the B gap. This B gap. Yeah, is, you got to take it, everything back. Is 88 a tight end or a receiver right there? And 88, I believe, is a tight end. Yes. Yeah. This is a really – this is a weird deal. I mean, he's off the line. I mean, yeah. this is just – that's a great job reacting. Long story short, yeah. great job I, I – even me at 320 pounds would have ran up field on that one. I mean, that was just a good <laughs> job stopping, fighting the hard shoulder, and boom, you're right there to make a play. I'm just not sure what San Diego was trying to accomplish here. <laughs> I know, I know, absolutely. And I and I say I believe it's a tight end because all their receivers are built like tight ends. So I mean, they, they just got all those big, big dudes out there. But no, I, I believe that's what it is on that play. We'll we'll move on to the next play here, and this has kind of been a hallmark for him throughout the year. This is game one here, and you're going to see he goes to this kind of two hand mm, swipe. This this, this nice. cross chop here. Obviously, Kyler Murray gets out of the pocket, does a really good job of escaping here. But Mike Dana is the reason why he's kind of Ooh, forced out here. That's just nice. an absolutely devastating kind of two hand swipe here. It's a total chess match with your hands. I mean, you just and I don't know how many plays were before this, but we've talked about this before. DJ said mm -hmm. it. You're really setting these kind of moves up. You're trying to feel your guy out, and you're you know the timing of this has probably been set up throughout the game. But this yeah. is perfect. I mean, one step hops inside his hands. The, the swipe is perfect. And again, what we've talked about is you'll notice he has his hands more uh, uh, vertical instead of it's easy to sort of come out. Str straight but it's you know it's mm. a lot harder to hit when you go straight he's got his hands a little bit more vertical and he just i mean that's perfect finishes with the rip that's a that's a great job and i think dj you i was trying to diagnose that last play so i might have missed it but i think you were just talking about how uh you know this is hard for these interior guys to be dealing with this kind of speed yeah. right i mean they're used to when you put a guy like bailey in there or you put a guy like 51 in there dana i mean it's just the speed is not something that they're used to me in there, right? They're used to the big, heavy guys. So, uh, so this is a nice, this is you know, a nice job that Spags does getting those fast guys on the inside, and you can see the fruits of that here. You know, the 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 downside is, you know, when you get a guy in there, if they do run the football, it can be a problem. I've seen it be a problem before, but Dana seems like he has the ability to also play the one run very well, which is impressive mm -hmm. at two hundred and fifty something pounds. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 Dana does a great job knowing that he has a, a you know the superhero ninety five to the left of him. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. The center, either way, the center's going to help that way. He's not helping yeah, my right. way. You know, he'd be a fool right. to do that. Uh, but at the same time, he sets him up perfect. You know, get you in a four eye, get you in a wide three technique, and now you got space. And and right. I'm telling you, Mike, Mike Dana's more of an outside linebacker type of guy. So. Justin Houston and Tom Bali, they do this all the time, right? Uh, right, DeVito, that if they have problems on the outside, they'll move them into right. a three technique, wide three. Now that 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 guard is not, you know, they usually don't uh, uh, I guess they don't they don't go against speed like that all the right. time. When right. you get speed like this, man, it, it's hard for those guys. So this is this is perfect. I like this on third down. I like this now. Oh, yeah. First, second down. 
I don't like it as much because now I'm I'm in the middle saying, okay, guys, you got to gear up because they're going to double down on you. Right, so, right. Now, good push. Now, right. now it's not as effective. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a great Absolutely. point. Absolutely. That's a and great you'll point. notice both of these plays that I played so far, this is the, the Chiefs' dime look. They're they're yeah. an obvious pass situation here. You've only got the one linebacker on the field here. Nick's the only dude here mugged up. That's what you're going to see on this next play as well. This one, oh. obviously – end of the game here for for the Chiefs against the Titans here. This is a fourth down play in overtime, and you're going to see Dana here on the interior almost out to be a five technique here coming once again. Same move. Inside here. Same move. Yeah, but wanted to highlight going back the other way this time. Great move. And look at how wide he is. He's basically out in a four eye. I mean, a four eye if you talk to offensive linemen, offensive line coaches, whether it be in the run game, the pass game, the four eye is just, for whatever reason, it messes up their protections. It messes up their counting. They just hate a four eye. So to go out that wide, and then, and like we said, he has speed. So I believe the guard is Saffold. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I don't know who it is, but he knows he has to respect that speed upfield. And boom, he does perfect. One, two up, and then he bounces inside. Perfect with the side scissor again. Bam, bam, boom. And he's right there. I mean, he get his hips around. Yeah, I wish I could have done stuff. I would have had <laughs> millions and millions of dollars if I could have pulled that off. I mean, that was really good. <laughs> no, yeah, he's he's reading it well. And and even though, uh, again, 95 is away from him, and, you know, he gets a lot of attention uh, going his way. But I tell you what, um, I think being in a four-eye, Dana knows he has time to say, okay, let me get, give him speed. And as soon as that, as soon as he feels that, that that air or whatever that clear air right there he can make his quick move in there i mean and get vertical i mean that's just that's 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 an outside linebacker just taking advantage of a guard saying right. hey you don't this this kind of speed you're not used to seeing hey check this out he's and the awareness you're right dj the aware his awareness you can tell he's a linebacker because if you went back to the last play and you don't have to but yeah, if I you can't. look at the way the protection was set Look at the back is offset uh, <laughs> away from him. So yeah. normally the protection is going to go away from the back. So it should have gone towards him. But he knows it doesn't matter because you got 95 on the left. Yep. So he knows he has this inside, even though nor- normally you line up in this and you have the back to our left, their right. The center's usually coming to you. He's Absolutely. usually fanning out to you, but he doesn't because of Chris. And so mm-hmm. Dana knows this and takes advantage of it on both of these plays. So it's, again, it's just an awareness that even in a situation where normally you would get this, uh, you know, it's not going to be the case given your personnel and he takes advantage of it. So just that linebacker smarts to take that down inside and use it to his advantage. Plus all, you know, obviously his physical ability, you're just going to keep having stuff like this. And I, I do want to highlight here, Chris Jones and two point, two point stance on the outside of here. The, the Titans have mugged Derrick Henry up off the edge here to chip him. And so I know people are going to look at this and be like, yeah, Chris, coming off the edge. Man, he's done his job here. He's got two dudes out here. Yeah. He, he has more than done his job. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the pressure comes from elsewhere. That's a great job. So, yeah, great job by both of those guys here. Now we're going to swap a little bit inside. There, Mike Dana is an absolute charger killer, as we have seen, as we saw a couple weeks ago, absolutely showing up in the biggest, baddest ways. I believe this one right here is a terrific swim move. Once again, you see Chris Jones aligned opposite of him. The, the, The blocking scheme is going towards Chris Jones. He takes full advantage of that. That's what you have to do when you've got so much focus on another member of the defensive line, you're going to get one on ones. You got to win them, and he's winning them here. Yeah, it, it's it's one thing to 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 make a move and, and and laterally, but when you can get vertical, when you can take that, you know what I'm talking about, uh, mm-hmm. Devito. When you when, mm-hmm. you when you get a when you make a move, anybody can make a move, right? right. But when you can get the strength to get up under that guy and go through him and have enough power and speed to get 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 vertical after that move, that's the key. That's mm. the key. boom, and now get vertical right now. I mean, it's just it, it's it's a winning it's a winning move for Mike Dana, and we need to. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad that we're putting this on film right now because everybody, <laughs> oh, <okay, laughs> watching this. 
But uh, this is just our other teams are watching this because this is just, you know, when, when Dana's away from uh, uh, Chris Jones and you take the center away, I'm just telling you, your, your guard needs to be a Hall of Famer. If not, Mike Dana's going to beat him. Yeah, no question. And th so we used to call this technique a sub jam. So not, not only, like DJ was saying, is his ability to sort of square up and get explosive upfield after he's jam sub jammed inside, but like that right there, that – to be able to take two steps, slow down, and then generate that explosive move inside, that in and of itself is difficult. Like I, when I was playing, I could give you a hard jam inside right away, or I could give you hard right up the field. But it's very hard to, to explode out, sell like you're going up, and then regather and explode mm -hmm. inside. Oh, um, and so this is like he, you know, and, and again, it's and guards are not. Guards are used to guys like me, so they're not used to this type of explosiveness up front. And I mean, yeah, like DJ say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, this is just he just keeps winning with this. And so now you have a problem because look at the other side. Look at what nine five. Oh, doing. yeah. He's winning too. Dude, yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Boom. Same, same, same deal. So, like, you only got one center. I mean, how are you yeah. gonna how are you gonna block this? You know, this is great. This forces teams, you know, this forces teams in these passing situations to go heavier personnel because they just don't have enough guys, right? So now instead of going 11, you might have to go 12, mm. right, in order to stop it, you know, in order to stop four guys. So, you know, this is really, this is just the, the ripple effect of being able to rush four guys and get home. Um, you know, every defense I was on from my entire career, you know, if you could do that, you were in really, really good shape. And Kansas oh. City has been able to show to do it over oh, and over yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, like that's like ideal. If you can brush for and trust me, rushers always like Tumba and Justin Houston, all these guys we play with, they love when you rush for because don't get me wrong. You know, when you blitz, you know, we can we can scheme up something to get there, you know, but yeah, yeah. you rushing for you got people in the back end, you playing good coverage and, and the guys can let their hair down and do any kind of, you know, uh, um, cover me games or whatever right. they do uh as four rushers but uh real rushers love when you rush four because uh now they can go get out the quarterback and and uh, just like this mike dana's really really uh important um when it comes to uh the defensive line and getting mm. getting impact get affecting the quarterback sorry yeah no doubt yeah absolutely all right we're gonna we're gonna end on this one Mike Dana, when he first kind of came into the league, one of the things that I noticed, I got to talk to him a little bit coming out of Michigan. I, I commented on his ability to run some of these games up front, you know, these looping stunts and things like that. He was just an excellent setup man. He was the spear, basically the tip of the spear setting this up. And they've used him a lot like that in Kansas City. This is a sack that's set up because it is supposed to be mm. a TE, you know, a, a tackle end exchange off the edge here, setting up. Frank Clark to try and get a free rush on the interior. But you'll notice here, Mike Dana just kind of splits these two guys. I mean, that's exactly what you have to do with a, as a as a rusher, right, Mike? When you're setting up that TE exchange, you just got to keep driving through that gap. And if it gets free, you're the one who has to turn to it. Well, that this and this is what we said. If this game is run correctly, 51 is usually the one that's going to get free. Because <laughs> if he – Mike, if, I'm waiting for you to say it. I'm like, I already know my <laughs> – If he runs it right to set up the other guy, actually the first guy is actually going to get the sack. Actually. Exactly. Oh, all right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, he's the guy that's going to get the sack. Now, let me tell you what's difficult about this. Even, you know – I ran, I ran these, I can't tell you how many times. And again, I was 320 pounds. It's easy to get bounced out of there, right? So what that guard is going to try to do when he recognizes that it's a TE stunt is he wants to push uh, Dana out to 68, right? So he wants to get him out of there, get him to widen, and then they can pass it off. But because Dana stays so tight, stays low, doesn't let him get leverage on him, he's able to get that pick on the shoulder and boom, he's right there. That's not easy to do. Like again, at 320 pounds, there were, you know, there were a, a many a times more times than not that I was getting bounced out to the tackle, you know, for a guy to be in there at 250 pounds and to use his, you know, use his speed, use, use his leverage, stay low and, and get in between those two guys and pick that, pick that tackle and get around. I mean, that's, that's not easy to do. And again, the guy's a linebacker. I mean, it's just, 
you know, this is something that I bet you Bailey Bailey did really well. Dontari Poe, right? That those are the type of guys you see uh, doing these things really well. Explosive, but bigger guys. Dana's, you know, 250 pounds, and yet he runs it perfectly. Doesn't get bounced out of there at all. So this yeah. is textbook stuff. Yes, it is. Um, and and the the I guess the important part of this um, this stunt is uh, Mike Dana has to know who's going to end up trying to block him. So mm -hmm. he, when he gets off, he has to get off saying, hey, when my guy, uh, um, when um, who is that on the outside? Is that Clark? That's Frank Clark. Clark, yeah. Clark coming yeah. in, who's going to block Clark? So, so he knows that the, the guard is going to come off of him at some point. But if you can – if you can have enough explosive power and get through that B gap and put your hands on that tackle's back saying, Hey, this tackle is not going to come back and uh, actually mm -hmm. block me. This is man. This is perfect. And he has contained still too. So this is, this is hard to hard to stop when 51 does it right. Like that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to stop. Craig, you know, so this, this is, this is very hard to stop and it's, it's very hard to do it. So I was just thinking back to my career. You know what I used to do when I had to run these TE stunts? I'd be so if I'm where Dana is, I would get he much heavier on him on 71 okay. and go right down the middle of him and throw my left hand in and hook him on the inside because I knew I wasn't going to be able to pick them. But so what I was going to try to do was hook his inside and let keep the, him with you, keep yeah. him with me. Mm -hmm. So and then roll out once once he passes through. So I would try to free up the other guy yeah. because of how hard that technique was. Yeah. Um, to throw like a little hump inside on his inside 71 and then hope 55 gets around. No, that's, uh, that's smart though, Davino, because in, in your case, you're saying, Hey, I'm a bigger guy. I probably can't, can explode through like that and, and be free. So, you know what? I'm a, I'm a be a team guy. That's you've, yeah. you've always been that way. That, that helps out everybody. Trust me. But for you to hook them and be smart like that, that's, that's, I mean, we all, we all get the love at the end of the day. We all, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that, DJ. Yep. I mean, Absolutely, man. Brother. Absolutely. So, I mean, but that's kind of what we've seen out of Mike Dana this year on the interior. And I, I just don't think that we collectively have been talking enough about it because, like, mm -hmm. like we said, there, there are so many guys on this defense that are playing so well, so many young guys that we highlight all the time. It's just one of those things. I wanted to, wanted to take a moment kind of review the way that he's playing on the inside because that's a hard role for him to do mm. and it's a hard thing for him to pull off. All right, let's fast forward to this weekend. Mm. Chiefs playing against the Bengals. This is the team that mm. knocked the Chiefs out of the AFC Championship game, gave the Chiefs a late season loss last year. There's been plenty of talk, plenty of business leading up to this. You guys have been in these kinds of games before. When you're going into a season and you're looking at the schedule, you got some games certainly that you're circling. You know, all, all of them mean a, a lot. You know, not trying to say that ones are more important than others, but you got ones that maybe you're getting a little more up for. And it appears that both the Chiefs and the Bengals are getting way up for mm -hmm. this one. DJ, let's start with you. You've been in this scenario before. How? What's your mindset going into this week? Do you guys take it? completely personal is it one of those things that you're in the film room on in practice field you just feel that intensity growing because you really badly want to beat this team and kind of have an avenged loss there or is it kind of business as usual well the political correct answer is business as usual right but you know, we are human right we, we, yeah. we, we yeah. know we remember stuff we don't forget that easy but uh, uh, uh cincinnati is a team that uh, um we need to let them know that we can beat them we need to mm -hmm. uh, let ourselves know that you know throughout the especially late in the season like this as we're getting better and playing better all in November and December that we need to we need to beat, beat teams like this because we're going to see teams in the playoffs like this and obviously mm -hmm. uh, what happened last year we, we, we don't want it we, we have that bad taste in our mouths even though we, we you know we've gotten over it but it's still a taste there so mm -hmm. uh, to actually go against a, a team that's you know very proven very proven quarterback very proven uh, uh, defensively very proven uh, in Jamar Chase, uh, you talking about uh, guys that are, that are going to be here for a long time. Uh, we need to we need to play good, and it's just going to okay. add even more focus for. I, I don't think we're going to put this game on a pedestal because it's not a must win, but it's right. a win. 
say, hey, you know, this is a this is a really quality opponent in the AFC conference. We need to show them we're you know we're better, and yeah. uh, um, uh, we do you know we are a better team, but we need to show it each and every time. And we've been playing more consistently throughout the yeah. year. But I tell you what, um, last year was a, a big 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 letdown for us to uh, uh, for them to come in to, uh, to the Chiefs and and. Mm-hmm. and it. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you, DJ. And I think one thing that's fun about the way this week has played out, um, going off of what DJ said, you know, I played four years with Rex Ryan, and mm-hmm. we talk crap every week to everybody. <laughs> um, and I loved it. And then other teams would get fired up and they would talk crap back. And I remember going on the field, right? And you'd be getting ready to start that game. And we're looking at them and they're looking at us. And it's almost like rival gangs. We were so mad at each other at that point. It's like, let's go, let's freaking, let's fight. And that's how this week has seemed to play out, right? And, mm-hmm. and uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Allen sort of highlighted this with the back and forth between uh, Reed and the, the tight end for the Bengals and some John back and forth. That's fun, baby. That's yeah. fun. Let's let's turn it into that. Let's turn it into a dog fight. Let's get after it. That makes for really fun, awesome football. And to go off what DJ's saying, th- this is – Probably, you know, you don't overlook anybody, but the Chiefs have the weakest strength of schedule left. So yes. this is the team. If you get this team yep. and then you handle your business and you got the number one seed. But th- this mm-hmm. is the this is the challenge. Again, you don't overlook anybody, but just sure. being honest, this is the challenge, right? This is the team. You get this team. It should be a coast in to that number one spot. So let's go get it, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And we will be back next week, and we're going to get it. Hopefully, the defense plays really well against yeah, this uh, against this Joe Burrow team. I show up. I, I want to highlight about four Chris Jones sacks this game. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, be- I just yeah. I, you think that man is ready? Like spent all off season thinking about that one sack he missed in the AFC Championship game. <laughs> you don't want Boy. that man ready. I don't, <laughs> don't want him want ready. ready. So, yeah, put some all run right. plays in there though, Craig. Give me something yeah. to talk about. <laughs> I, 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 will. I will. We'll get some run plays. We'll get some. Run <laughs> you guys plays are gonna have there. Tomba on here next year. Like, <laughs> Vito's knowledge is done. He's out. <laughs> All right. Well, we really appreciate these two joining us. We really appreciate you all for watching and joining us. Once again, click the link down below. Donate to Derek Johnson to Finn the Dream Foundation. We will be back next week. Be kind to each other, and we'll catch you later. <laughs> Good one, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you, brothers. You guys, you guys answered the secondary question I was going to ask about the Bengals. I didn't even have to ask it. You guys were already on it. <laughs> like, That's good. That's like, good. it's not a must win. You're not going to get too down in the dumps about it if you don't win or anything like that. I wanted to make sure that was kind of out there. Yeah, no, DJ, you yeah. got that perfect, DJ. Yeah, but yeah. we need to win. <laughs> we need yeah. to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely need to win, especially with as much shit as they're talking right That's now. That's right. Like, they're getting after it. <laughs> DJ, I miss you, brother. <laughs>